Breaking news tonight, live New Brunswick. They sacrificed and saved their whole life to send their teenage son to prestigious Rutgers University. But then, the unexpected, the unforeseen, the dreaded call. Their teen boy drowned, dead, drowned in the swirling waters of the Hudson River. Then, uncovered a stunning and cruel trail of torment by his own college roommate here from India to use the U.S. higher education system. A trail of mocking, of jabs, of jibes, and ultimately live streaming the team's first sex encounter with a male there in the dorm room over the internet. Well, it all ended. It ended in the death of Team Tyler Clemente, giving in to the pain and the intimidation, the humiliation. Tyler drowned dead. Bombshell tonight, in the last hours, after a jury hears the evidence and brings down a hammer on India-born Doran Ravi, handing down a guilty verdict, outrage. The judge's sentence? Just 30 days in a county jail. This after a teen student is found dead? No. Heart-wrenching cyberbullying case. Allegedly, he posted this Facebook message just before he took his life. Quote, jumping off the GW bridge, sorry, end quote. Roommate asked for room till midnight. And I went into Molly's room and I turned. Caring, thoughtful, generous, trustworthy, and dependable person Tyler was. And Ravi was uh, convicted of intimidation and invasion of privacy. This individual was not convicted of a hate crime. He was convicted of a bias crime. Mr. Ravi did these criminal acts because he saw my son as not deserving basic human decency. We are taking your calls and outrage at this hour. This young man that you see took his own life after merciless taunting, merciless jives by his new roommate at a prestigious university that man, India-born Ravi, Duran Ravi, just sentenced to only 30 days behind bars. We are taking your calls. Joining me right now, special guest Larry Fischelson, telecommunications expert, co-founder of Dynalink Communications. Larry, how is this webcam set up? How did this happen? Well, Nancy, what he did was he set up the webcam which was looking at, at you know what happened here, but the way that they the way that he set it up was you can go ahead remotely and dial in through the webcam, which you could do anything web based through the cloud, which is all the information stored on his server. So he went ahead and remotely got into his computer, posted a hyperlink out there, which let everybody in the world go ahead and see it. So it could happen to anybody, but what's terrible here is that you know. It was tr a tragedy on what was done, and it was not done for security purposes, as they tried to claim, because we saw through the text messages, the instant messages, exactly what was happened here. So there was no way around it. All the evidence here was shown through technology, which the police found. Now, when you say the technology, how is it that you set up such a thing that you can invite viewers to watch a live streaming, like you can invite Twitter viewers Twitter, friends on Twitter, uh, friends on Facebook, friends online to watch live streaming. How do you set it up? Uh, what I'm trying to get at, Larry Fischelson, is the frame of mind, the degree of planning the defendant put into this. Yeah, unfortunately, in this case, it's very easy to do. And this was a real sick frame of mind. Very simply, all he had to do was remotely dial into his computer and set up the hyperlink where the hyperlink is the application coming from the webcam of the computer and all you do is send it out to whoever you want and they can see it live now you could do that with it with anything now it's supposed to be used the right way for security purposes or on many websites uh... you know if, if people want to see special things and items and and, and, and of that sort, but this was strategically used 100% for the wrong way. So you're taking something that's supposed to be used properly and just sending it out to the world, and it's a tragedy what happened here through this.